Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. Growing up as a young schoolboy in Scotland, one of the, the first novels I read was a book called A Kestrel for a Knave. It was then adapted into a film called Kez. Uh, it was about a schoolboy who found a kestrel and raised it. Um, and ever since then, I've always had a love affair with kestrels and they're my favourite bird of prey. For most people, however, their first encounter with kestrels is the bird that they see hovering above a roadside verge or a motorway verge hunting. So what I want to do in this video is share with you how I go about photographing kestrels. What we'll do is we'll look at how to identify the kestrel, where we're going to find them, the habitat that they live in, look at some of their behaviour and then finally I'll go through my approach to photographing kestrels. Okay so how do we identify the, the kestrel? Um, when we look at the, the male kestrel you're looking at a bird that's got a, a blue greyish head um, with a blue greyish tail um, Basically, the, the majority of its back is chestnut brown in colour and it's got black band on its tail. And I'll show you some little clips as I describe each of the, 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 the kestrels. We then move on to the female. The female is more brown overall. She's got a completely brown head. Um, she's got a completely chestnut brown back and she has a brown barred tail. And again, you'll see the difference in the video clips. Okay, so when we look at the the male and the female in comparison. Um, female's got a brown head, the male's got a grey head. The female has a heavily barred brown back, whereas the, the male is slightly less barred on its back. The female has a distinctive brown barred tail, whereas the male has a grey tail. And in general, females are generally larger than males. That's a male. Grey tail, grey head. And then we can see the male and the female together. You see the baron on the tail of the female on the right. Then we move on to the fledglings. Um, when fledglings, fledglings appear from the, the nest, which you'll, you'll see some video of, um, they're very similar in appearance to the female and they remain like that, they're heavily streaked and they remain like that until they get their adult plumage at about the age of two to three years old. One other good way to identify a kestrel is through its call. Um, there are basically three calls th uh, that you can remember. Firstly there's the normal call that the kestrel gives off which is just a, a basic key, key, key. And again, I'll show you clips of each of these um, as I talk about them. So the first call is its normal call, which goes clee, clee, clee. The second call, which you'll see, is the alarm call. And in this clip, you'll see um, a magpie actually trying to get into the kestrel's nest. Uh, and you'll hear the, the, the female in the background. And then finally, there is the begging call of the fledglings who will sit up in the trees and be completely quiet until the, the parents appear with food and then they go crazy, um, crying out, begging for food. And you'll see these in each of the clips. And here we've got a magpie that's actually come across the kestrel's nest and he's trying to get in. I can hear the female scream. So where are we going to find a kestrel and what type of habitat do, do they prefer? Well, kestrels mainly defend a small territory um, around their nest. Uh, that's normally within about a kilometre of the, the nest site itself and it will find hunting grounds to, to hunt for food for themselves and the, and the young. Um, however, depending on the number of kestrels in the area, that area could extend up to something like 10, 10 kilometres. 
um, and it's all dependent on the food supply and the number of uh, other kestrels locally uh, and here we'll have a look at the type of habitat that they prefer. However, kestrels don't uh, predominantly habitat one sole type of area. They can be found in a variety of habitats, including open countryside, farmland, towns and cities, and as I said at the beginning, a lot of people normally see them hover above um, roadway and motorway verges. Um, they're a familiar sight uh, for most people hovering, as I said, uh, above the, the ground, uh, hunting for their prey. When we talk about perfect habitat for a kestrel, and I'm watching the kestrel now, um, this is the, the habitat that they're after. Open countryside, long grass, hedge lined, trees to, to, to the sides, and there's got to be lots of voles and shrews and mice, and you know, th this, this is where they'll, th th they come predominantly to, to hunt. Um, this is a, a bird that I've been following um, from his nest, he comes here, he hunts every morning, or in fact he hunts here all day, uh, and he's just coming up above me now. And I'm going to get my other camera out. Okay, what I want to do now is uh, I want to look at some kestrel behaviour. Uh, firstly, what we'll do is we'll look at um, how kestrels go about setting up the, 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 the nesting areas. Um, kestrels don't build nests as, as, as such. Um, kestrels tend to nest in cavities and, 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 and buildings. They will go to nest boxes uh, and they, they do prefer cavities and trees. Uh, they will also use disused crow's nests. Um, the female will only produce eggs dependent on how much food is available. Um, <coughs> the female will normally lay between three to six eggs in sort of like late April, early May, and incubation can take up to 30 days. Uh, and I have been following a nest this year, um, and I haven't released this video until um, I witnessed the, the young kestrels actually leave the nest. So they're all safe. And here we've got the the male guarding the entrance to the the nest hole. Um, there have been magpies in the area. So he's just protecting his nest and his female and his eggs. All checks at the moment. When it comes to the, the kestrel's diet, it consists mainly of things like voles, shrews, small birds, insects and also earthworms. Kestrels need to eat around four to eight voles a day um, and what they'll also do is they'll store food um, in, in the nests um, so that when it comes to the end of the day, before they go to roost, they're not going to roost on an empty stomach. What I want to do now is just show you um, a series of video clips of kestrels uh, hunting and feeding. Let me go food pass, food past. She's got, yeah, she's got a ball. It's a bird actually. Okay, when it comes to Kessel's hunting, Kessel's are the master of the hover. They're absolutely fantastic to watch um, whilst they're hunting and they're hovering above the ground looking for the food. Um, the wind plays a major factor in this and in the video clips uh, I'd like you to note that uh, kestrels, and it's from a photography point of view, kestrels will always hunt into the wind. So if the wind's coming like this, 
kestrels here, its head will be absolutely static. It's incredible to watch while, whilst they're hovering and they're searching for food. It's a great technique. Um, their eyesight is so remarkable that they they can detect beetles up to 50 metres away from, from a perch. Now, kestrels don't just predominantly uh, hunt from the hover, they will also hunt from the perch. And what I want to do is just go through and show you some clips of the sequence of events that a kestrel will go through whilst it's hunting. Um, the first thing that they'll do is they will hover. Once they've hovered and they've homed in on their prey, what they will do next is they will dive to make the kill. And once they've made the kill, they will then take that prey back to a perch or back to the nest and then consume the prey. And again, uh, I'll show you some video clip of that. Okay, what I do want to do now is just look at uh, my approach to photographing kestrels. Um, I would recommend using uh, a tripod and also a gimbal, um, especially for when the kestrels are in flight or hovering. When it comes to camera settings, I'm not going to talk about the specifics of my camera, which is the Canon R5, just talking about general camera settings for any camera. You're looking at using autofocus continuous or servo as it's known in Canon, um, shooting at your highest frame rate and then if you've got eye detection use eye detection it's great for the, the Kessel especially when the Kessel's hovering uh, it gets it straight away uh, if you've not got eye detection I would recommend a group area focus of about nine points if you have it um, for focusing in on your subject when it comes to the exposure settings um, there's two sets of settings that I would recommend. Firstly, for a stationary kestrel, which is sitting on a perch, or it might be sitting eating its prey. Um, again, if you've got a, a supported camera, you're looking at a shutter speed of about 1 250th of a second. You're looking at an aperture of about f7.1, which is the widest on um, uh, the, the, the lens that I shoot with. And then I always shoot in auto ISO. Now, for camera settings for kestrels in flight, you're looking at upping your shutter speed to about, I would recommend a minimum of one two thousandth of a second and that should nail the shot that you want for the kestrel either hovering or in flight. I would open up my aperture just a little bit more to about f.8 just to give you that little bit greater depth of field and again I always shoot in auto ISO. When it comes to classic pictures of kestrels I think you're looking at three types of pictures. Firstly, there's a classic, it's the kestrel in the hover. That's the one you've got to get. That's the real kestrel shot. The next one is a kestrel um, with prey, either in flight or sat on a perch actually eating its prey. They're the, the, the classic shots that I would recommend. So what I want to do now is just leave you with some of my favourite images of kestrels that I've taken and I hope that you enjoy them. Thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph kestrels. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have um, researching, following, photographing and videoing my favourite bird of prey, the kestrel. All I would ask is that if you've liked this, could you hit the like button? I could also ask you to consider subscribing to my channel Kevin Hartley Photography. It's completely free, it doesn't cost anything and it just keeps giving me that incentive to keep coming out here 
into the beautiful English countryside and photographing the wild earth and nature and being able to share it with others. So until the next time, stay safe, take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.